Hi, this is Daniel. You're watching Unrivaled Investing. A lot of folks are watching the banking sector implode. Small banks, large banks, everyone seems to be falling. So in this video, I want to talk about Bank of America because folks are looking at the 4% recent drop, the roughly 20% drop this past month, saying, well, what's going on here? Are they safe? What do I think is going on? Well, first of all, you should have some context. So I first did a video on Silicon Valley Bank and I called out very quickly. They were insolvent, unlikely to recover. Within 24 hours, they were seized. Then I did a two-part video series on Charles Schwab, Wells Fargo, and First Republic. Called out that First Republic, yeah, they did have a big hole in their balance sheet, looked to be insolvent, but maybe enough depositors could fill that gap. And if, if, depositors, if depositors didn't flee the bank, then you could be fine. And so we'll see how that's playing out. It's still trading around its lows. There's significant uncertainty there. Looking at Bank of America, how does this play out? First of all, one should understand this is one of the big boys. This is a $3 trillion bank in terms of assets, second largest in the United States. When you look at the United States, $20 trillion economy, there's $3 trillion in assets for Bank of America. You cannot risk something like this coming under pressure. You cannot risk Bank of America failing because then you're looking at a depressionary type of scenario, $3 trillion in assets versus a $20 trillion economy. Now, looking at the balance sheet, I personally don't believe that Bank of America is anywhere near the risk that you saw with many of the banks that have been seized or are imploding. Completely different game, even though they're selling off. So why are they selling off? We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. First, let's look at their balance sheet. They do have some holes in their balance sheet. They have invested in treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities that have lost them around $108 billion. They carry these bonds at $630 billion, but they acknowledge it's only worth $524 billion. That is a sizable $108 billion hole. This wasn't necessarily making bad investments or, well, kind of, pretty much, but it, it, it wasn't making bad credit investments. They weren't saying like, hey, we're going to go loan it to a guy on the street. What they, were do what they were doing is they were buying U.S. treasuries because they said, we don't know what else to do with the capital. And as interest rates moved higher, those treasuries dropped in value. So they should have been buying shorter duration treasuries and shorter duration mortgage-backed securities, but they reached for yield. And as interest rates moved higher, they lost money to the tune of $108 billion. So that was a bad bet that they did. The next component that you need to consider is their loan book, which has over a trillion dollars, but they acknowledge might only be worth $985 billion because once again, interest rates have moved higher. So that's another roughly $30 billion loss. There's a lot of different assumptions that go into what's the value of their loan book, but broadly, combined, you're looking at maybe a $140 billion hole in Bank of America. Now that might get you nervous, but you should have an understanding that that $140 billion hole is against roughly $250 billion in equity. So they can handle that $137, $140 billion hole against $245 billion in equity. There's a $100 billion cushion effectively when you're thinking about the equity in this business, roughly. You know, I'm, I'm not going into some of the details, but this gives you a rough sense that there is still some cushion here. And another key aspect that separates Bank of America from the other banks that have had trouble is that they have $2 trillion nearly in deposits. A lot of these are smaller deposits that are under that $250,000 insurance threshold. So those folks are going to say, you know what, Bank of America is going to be fine. I'm just going to keep it there. So Bank of America has stickier deposits where Silicon Valley Bank, you had VC, you know, investors saying, pull your money now. And you're seeing similar things play out in companies like First Republic as well. And I personally, you know, have seen that with with an investor that was effectively told by a major hedge fund, like, hey, pull your funds out of here. So you, you do have these dynamics playing out where if you do not have a super sticky deposit base and your first insolvent, it can create some real problems for you where it encourages where some depositors do get flighty. You know, they go, oh my goodness, there's this, you know, you, you don't have enough equity to handle the holes in your balance sheet. What's going to go on now? Once again, as I've said, I think Bank of America is a completely different beast because they have so much equity and they have so many stable deposits. I suspect they're actually benefiting from the current tumult with increased amount of deposits. Now, if they're potentially even benefiting, why is the stock lower to the tune of three to 4%? Well, first, in full disclosure, this is not financial advice. And... You know, if you're interested in the different things that I call out to my subscribers at unrivaledinvesting.com, you know, I'm calling out businesses that I'm looking for. I call out what I'm personally buying. I'm trying to find compelling ideas. So once again, if you're interested, go to unrivaledinvesting.com. I also have an exclusive, we, we have an exclusive Discord server available only for annual subscribers. So if you sign up, I'll personally let you into our Discord server. And so looking at Bank of America, why is it selling off? A couple of different reasons for this. First of all, 
you still have this crisis going on in, the, in this banking sector because there's this uncertainty. You have too big to fail and you have everyone else. And if you're a depositor at everyone else above that $250,000, you're probably, you know, scratching your head right now wondering like, why am I going to keep my funds here? If there's this risk that I don't know how to read the balance sheet and this bank can be insolvent, why don't I just pull the funds and move it to a much larger bank? So that's, that's a problem for a large part of the banking sector. So that means consolidation. That means, you know, the, the big get even bigger. So you have that aspect. Another aspect is the U.S. government really doesn't want to say, look, all depositors are now insured. Because if they did that, then all the international banks would be in trouble because international depositors would say, I'm just going to put my money with these banks and I could get a, a de facto, you know, a default U.S. Treasury you know, back, you know, the U.S. government would be backing these deposits. So why don't I put it to, you know, the these U.S. banks? And so then you'd see runs on international banks, in which case, you know, you, you have this, you know, global problem now with their economies getting hit. Another reason why, you know, you're starting to see Bank of America and all these other banks, you know, fall is because you have all these different moving pieces and folks are concerned that there's going to be increased coercion, increased regulation on all banks, because previously you were fighting the last war, which was a great financial crisis and sort of saying, hey, you got to make sure you don't do bad credits. You don't make, you know, these subprime bets. Now folks are waking up like, ooh, duration is also a problem. You shouldn't be making these super long term loans or, you know, investing, you know, in these long dated bonds, you know, if interest rates can move higher. So you could probably expect to see increased regulation and possibly unfavorable coercion for several of the largest banks, where recently I'd argue you saw that with First Republic, where First Republic is getting a $30 billion infusion from Bank of America and other banks, where Bank of America is putting in a few billion dollars to say, oh yeah, we're an unsure, unsure depositor. And clearly it's not favorable for Bank of America, but they're doing it because probably the banking regulator said, yeah, Bank of America, you need to do this. If you, if you enjoy your banking license, this is what you need to do. And Bank of America, because it's a regulated institute, they can't say pound sand. They got to go, okay, you know, okay, Federal Reserve. Okay, you know, guy who works for Jerome Powell, guy or gal, I'm going to do what you say. You know, I, that's and that's ultimately the challenge. And I think the next key component and why these bank stocks are falling, including some of the strongest, is because I think folks are increasingly worried that you can have some sort of blow up. You see Credit Suisse, you know, the second largest bank in Switzerland, that's down significantly. Um, you know, it just got a $50 billion lifeline, but the stock's still going down. So there's worry about some sort of cross blow up. You know, what are the derivatives tied to Credit Suisse? Who's going to back this? You know, could you have a European Lehman moment? And then another concern is regarding you know, like, could you face an economic downturn because of all these smaller banks that are now in crisis mode that aren't going to provide credit? So then you see an economic contraction, in which case it sort of spirals into higher delinquencies, higher default rates, in which case it goes, it effectively blows back to a Bank of America because then their loan portfolio starts you know, seeing problems as well. So I think you're you're starting to see this crisis, you know, play out. It wouldn't surprise me to see something like a Warren Buffett step in and buy a bank or invest invest significantly in something like that and get very preferred terms. You know, so it wouldn't surprise me to see some dynamic like that play out. But we I, it's very, very tough to tell where we're going from here at the end of the day, because you still have the Federal Reserve dealing with raising interest rates and you still have this ongoing crisis going on with the banking sector, with a lot of these smaller banks saying that their depositors, you know, in, in particular, wondering why should I keep my funds with these smaller banks if I'm not getting the same guarantees that I would be getting with a bigger bank. If this video has been helpful for you, please make a point of hitting that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for tuning in.